Well, hello everyone, and thank you for being here uh, today. And if you're watching this um, at some point in the future, um, thank you for tuning in on YouTube or the blog or whatever. My name is Jay Berkowitz, and today we're going to talk all about converting prospects to clients. And it's so important um, that the, that side of the business is focused on. And you know, we're a digital marketing agency, and so. Often our clients are, you know, really, really focused on, you know, how many leads did we get? How many clicks did we get? How many came from Google and how many came from different media sources? And we don't spend enough time or they don't spend enough time on the back of the house. So today we're going to talk about um, the intake piece, which we, in the industry, we generally call intake. And, and that's answering the phone. That's answering chats. Um, that's answering um, form fills and all the importance around tracking it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, I've got two awesome um, guests, uh, panelists today with me. And they are Gary Falkowitz and Puya Abka. And you'll meet them in just a few minutes, but uh, you, you can say hi, guys. And um, I just want to talk a little bit about um, what intake is and what some of the key metrics are that we track. And then we'll get right to our special panelists and then we'll spend a lot of time answering your questions and i'm going to ask the guys some of the tough questions too so you know when we talk about um, intake we're really talking about um, three key metrics and um, i would say that you know the three that really matter are phone calls chats and form fills in that order so this is an example of one of our clients landing pages and you click on a Google ad and you come to a landing page. We typically use the term landing page to refer to paid uh, pages where we can specifically direct traffic. So your homepage or an internal page on your website comes from SEO or, or a referral from another website. But in the paid traffic, we can specifically direct someone to a page where we can control a lot of the variables. For example, um, if we if this was a live page and we scrolled up, this is a sticky header, and we keep the phone number um, and the free case review right at the top of the page. Um, in this example, we're actually testing a couple of variables on this landing page, and on this page, we've got a form right at the top, and of course, chat is really prominent on the site. Um, and when we meet Puya, we're going to learn all about a new kind of artificial intelligence chat today too. So the three key things we're looking for, number one are phone calls. And we've, uh, I'll show you in a minute, typically phone calls convert about 10 times better than a form fill um, for lawyers and professional services. And the reason for that is if you get someone on the phone and you find out if you can help them and, you, and they have a case, you can almost, you know, you, you've got a 100% better chance of getting that person to sign on when you're talking to them, when you've got them on the phone. But, you know, if, if those folks only, um, um, you know, fill out a form and then maybe they go back to Google and search three or four other law firms, there's a good chance someone else is going to get them on the phone, sign them up. And by the time you call them from the form fill, they've already signed up with another law firm, or maybe they're still on the phone with the other law firm. So it's really, really important that your intake process is focused on phone calls and your intake team, whether it's you know, a, a call center or you, you handle these things in-house, your intake team is super attentive to answering the phone, being empathetic and all the, the, the great strategies you'll hear about uh, from the guys today and converting that prospect on that first opportunity. So um, what we do with this, uh, with this setup is we get very, very precise data and very precise tracking information. So this is the back end for one of our clients. And the, these, are, for example, are all the calls. And we create a database with calls, forms, and chats. And it has all the information um, of who called, how long the call was, uh, where the call came from. And um, then this information is transferred to this document. And this document tracks how many of those clients were actually retained as clients. 
And you see here that the calls convert at 20, 21, 27%. So as I mentioned before, we really want to focus on phone calls because those typically convert to clients at a higher rate. Um, we see 23% overall for this client. Chaps converted at about 12%. And Puya is going to uh, tell you that the artificial intelligence can, can help even more with that number. And typically forms are down in the 2, 3, 4, 5% ratio. Uh, overall, we're co converting leads at 17.9%. But really, this chart sums up what it's all about. We've got to be super attentive to uh, our, our, our conversion. So when people come to the website, to the landing page, we convert them into an opportunity. We get them on the phone. We get them into a chat. We get them to, to complete a form fill. And then we get back to them right away with a trained team of intake specialists. And we'll talk a lot more about that today. So um, without further ado, um, I mentioned my name is Jay Berkowitz. I'm the founder of 10 Golden Rules. Um, and we do internet marketing for law firms. Um, and we're based in Boca Raton, Florida. And our sister agency is in Minneapolis. And these are a number of our clients. And uh, uh, we pretty much now all day, every day, I'm talking to lawyers and helping them with their digital marketing initiatives and, and frankly, helping them with you know, consulting with important component parts like intake and converting prospects. And just behind me, you'll see uh, my new book coming out in the fall called Internet Marketing for Law Firms. And uh, we'll, we'll be uh, sharing that with everybody and hopefully um, be, be a real great resource uh, to yourself and the industry um, because we've sort of collected all of our best practices for, from doing this for 18 years um, in one place and customized it for the legal industry. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce Gary uh, Falkowitz, first of all. And Gary was an attorney for 16 years, and he's the president at ICE, Intake Conversion Experts. He's the author of The Complete Guide to Law Firm Intake. So he's literally written the book on intake, um, and principal owner at Maximum Intake Consulting. So if you want, you want someone to coach your team, to listen to your calls and help your team, um, Gary's that guy. And if you want to outsource your team, ICE is a great place to do it. Um, he also runs Falkowitz Law Firm in his spare time, um, but he's really an intake guy, but he could tell us how much uh, um, actual uh, law firm work he's doing these days. Um, and he's done all kinds of other stuff, uh, being a TV spokesperson, speaks at uh, many of the great conferences, and he managed the referral process at Parker Wakeman. Um, and I believe some of the folks at Parker Wakeman are on the call today. Jerry Parker, the founder, is a great friend of ours. Um, at 10 Golden Rules. So without further ado, I'm going to pause my screen here and flip over to Gary. Gary, do you want to run the slides or do you want me to put your slides up for you? Uh, go right ahead. You could do it. And uh, I'll just give you a little next when I'm ready. Um, guys, nice to meet you, everybody. Uh, if you haven't heard of me, that's okay. Uh, I'm Gary Falkowitz. To say that uh, you throw yourself into your line of work would be an understatement for me. Um, I uh, never thought that somehow I'd be focusing my career on intake. When I went to law school, nobody talked to me about intake. Nobody talked to us really about owning uh, your own business, which is when you own a law firm, that's what you're doing. You own your own business. And it's funny when it all started, and I fast forward to uh, being a personal injury attorney at Parker Wakeman, uh, my eyes sort of uh, widened with uh, curiosity about, wow, this aspect of the business is sort of neglected uh, in most areas. And by this aspect, I mean intake. I mean, the idea of spending money, making sure you're maximizing your resources uh, so that your ROI is as high as it possibly could be uh, and making sure that your team is accountable to, to your processes. So um, I, will, I will jump into the next slide here, Jay, which is really how we think the industry works. We think it's simple. A lot of us sort of turn a blind eye to what's really going on. And what we believe is, Jay, just want to make sure, did you get to that next slide? Because on my screen, I'm still on uh, my handsome face. Perfect, excellent. So uh, this is how we think it works, right? We think that we spend money. We think that claimants reach out to us. We respond. We decide whether we want it or not. And then we either sign them or we lose them. Um, there is a lot 
that goes on between step one and step six over there that I'd like to talk about with you just for a few minutes. Before we get there, let's go to the next slide and explain why it's not how the industry works, okay? There's a, a term that Jay used in the opening here. He said conversion percentage. And depending upon what metric you're looking at with your law firm, you can define that word or that term a little bit differently. At intake, when I look at conversion, what I'm looking at is of all the cases that qualify, of all the cases that I wanted to sign, how many did I ultimately sign? Now, I know from my consulting experience that many law firms think this number is much higher than it really is, right? If you, I can't tell you how many times I spoke with a law firm and say, hey, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, um, let's say you get, uh, you got 100 uh, cases that you wanted to sign last month. How many do you think you signed? Ah, oh, all of them, if not all of them, like 97, 98 of them. And that's what I'm talking about in terms of conversion. Of those that qualified, of those that you sent a retainer out to, of those that you wanted to become a client, how many did you ultimately sign? Now I'm gonna tell you the hard reality here or the hard truth. For general negligence law firms, the average conversion percentage is 70 to 75%. For mass tort law firms, the average conversion percentage is 55 to 60%. What that means is that if you have your own, and I'm not talking about strong brands here, guys. I'm talking about those law firms that are spending multiple, and obviously the smaller ones as well, because if it's an issue up top, it's certainly an issue for the lower spenders. If you're spending millions of dollars marketing a month or a year, doesn't matter, and you want uh, 100 cases or 1,000, doesn't matter, that you want to sign per month, you're only signing 70 to 75% of those, which means you're leaving on the table 25 to 30% of cases that you want to sign, right? This is, the, this is the truth. I've been out there enough to know that this isn't made up or hypothetical, this is experiential. For mass tort law firms, that number is even lower because your brand is not necessarily known to the masses and you're only signing 55, leaving 30, uh, 45, that's right, 45, 45% of clients that you want to sign on the table. So if it's so simple, this whole intake process, why is your conversion rate so low? And the obvious answer is, A, the competition is intense. There are too many leaks in the process and there's inadequate communication going on between us and claimants. So let's talk about how, I, how it really works. This is our next slide here, Jay, sorry. This is how it really works. Okay, number one, what we do is, we're gambling. We are gambling and investing in our law firms. We are gambling and investing a significant amount of money into marketing and lead generation, whether it's uh, outsourcing it to another marketer, whether it's having someone internally doing it for you, whether it's going out and networking, going radio, radio, going on TV, uh, being all over the web. We're spending a lot of money and hoping and praying that people are going to give us a, a call or a lead. Now, then we spend sub substantial time resources and effort in responding timely and accordingly. Jay talked about before the three different ways that leads will come in, whether they're phone calls, whether they're web forms, whether they're chats, and please, I'm sure is going to talk about that a little bit, right? And then what we need to do is we need to make sure that our response time and our resources with respect to responding are top notch, right? That they're quick, that they're immediate, that they're uh, recurring, that they're uh, for long periods of time. After that, assuming we get them on the call, we need to acquire sufficient information from them on every lead to make an informed decision. Now, here's something I want you guys to understand. There is value with every person that you speak with, even if they don't qualify. That could be another client in the future, or that could be a referral source for you in the future. You have to make sure that you get their contact information. You have to make sure that you put them in some sort of remarketing tool that you're using so that you stay in their minds, even if you provided them with some bad news that you couldn't help. Now, let's say we acquire all that information. The next thing we have to do is we need to make a decision as to whether we want this claimant to become a client or not, and we need to make that decision immediately. Now, Gary, isn't that, don't, of course, we need to make that decision. Well, you say that, or you agree with me, yet there are so many law firms that will tell a claimant, Mrs. Jones, thanks so much for sharing this information. Let me talk to the lawyer and give you a call back to see whether we can help. And we actually hang up and we let, you know, we, we think that we have this claimant, this potential claimant or potential client waiting for us. When in reality, what we're doing is giving them an opportunity 
to find another law firm. So we need to uh, equip our team, whoever that is, whoever's picking up that call and speaking with the claimant, they need to be prepared to make a decision as to whether we want it or not. And don't worry about the mistakes. We don't have to get eight pluses with that decision. Now, after we make that decision, this is the tough one. We have to convince them to become a client because I'm going to tell you something. When claimants call you, it's not because they want to become a client. They want to see whether they have a case. They want to see whether you're interested and they want to know what you have to say that may or may not convince them to become a client. That's assuming we convince them to become a client. The next big one is now let's hold our team accountable to this consistent process while tracking specific metrics. Let's get to the next slide here, uh, Jay. Now, guys, everybody knows that any building the physical building is as strong as its foundation. And if the foundation begins to have cracks, then the whole building is potentially in jeopardy. Same thing goes with your law firm. The foundation of your law firm is intake. It just is. Anybody can go spend money for to generate leads. But if you don't turn those leads into clients at a high rate, your business will fail. Let's talk about the intake cracks that you need to be aware of, okay? By, by the way, guys, we're going through this, Jay, Puya, myself, we're giving you the abbreviated version, the, the Cliff Notes version of what you need to be aware of so that you're maximizing the return on your investment. Here are some of the intake cracks you need to be aware of. You may have the wrong person on the phone. Now, I'm going to go right down the list, guys. I'm not going to get into too much detail. You may have inadequate guidelines and procedures. Maybe you're not listening to calls, and I'll tell you right now, my hair is grayer now than it was in that first picture, and I'll tell you one of the reasons why is because I listened to so many calls and realized how much more improvement we can have and we can provide to our intake team so that they're saying the right things. I remember consulting for one law firm, listening to their calls, and, and the intake specialist said to the claimant, Mrs. Jones, probably a different last name, I'm sorry we can't help because the weather, because it was raining during this accident, when somebody rear-ended you, that's not the type of case we can help you out with, okay? That's what's going on out there. And that's obviously a result of lack of training, but how would you know that if you weren't listening to those calls? It's gotta be part of your weekly, if not monthly duties. Maybe you have outdated technology. Maybe you're not, not comprehending the claimant's mentality. This is a big one, guys. Not comprehending the claimant's mentality. If you don't understand what they're thinking, what they're looking for, the fact that they need reassurance. When someone calls you, I used to, I do this when I go to a conference. I'll have, let's call it 200 people in the audience. And I'll say, raise your hand if you ever needed a personal injury lawyer. And these are lawyers, by the way, it, just, it doesn't matter. If you ever need a personal injury lawyer, five people would raise their hand. Five people would raise their hand, right? And I'd say, raise your hand if you ever need a personal injury lawyer twice in your life. One person would raise their hand, which means this. Yeah, what does that mean? It means that you might live your whole life and never need a lawyer. And it also means that if someone's calling you, this might be the only time they ever need a lawyer. They need reassurance. They need someone who's listening. Now, here we are running a personal injury law firm thinking, ah, oh, we get 100 calls a day. Everybody needs a lawyer. I just got to say the same thing over and over again. But no, we got to put ourselves in the shoes of the claimant who never had to go through this process before. Let me keep going down this list because I could talk about this for hours. Maybe your nights and weekends are neglected and you don't have the right outsourced uh, software or company to pick up those calls or outsource the, the outbound phone calls. Lack of attorney involvement, that is a big one. Guys, if you ever went into a car dealership, ever went into a car dealership and you sat down with the sales broker, okay? After that meeting and you say, okay, I'm gonna think about this, I'll, I'll be back in touch. So the, sales, the salesman or saleswoman says to you, wait, hold, hold, Garrett, before you leave, I just wanna introduce you to our manager over here. Why is he doing that? Why is he introducing me to his manager? Because he does not want me leaving without keys in my hand and, and a check in his. He knows that he may only have one crack, one bite at this apple, right? So we got to look at it the same way at the law firm. If someone calls up and they qualify and we think that getting an attorney on the phone could help, we cannot delay that. Let's get that attorney on the phone because we may only have one bite at that apple. Maybe we're not considering appropriate vendors. We're not giving our staff the authority to make a decision, which I just talked about. They have to have that authority. Maybe we're not categorizing or not monetizing referrals. That's a big one. Guys, if you refer cases out, you need to have a very efficient process, a follow-up process to ensure that the people you're sending cases to are following up appropriately or giving you the status updates and obviously are paying you. Maybe there's a poor intake culture. Maybe we're not on the phone conveying interest. 
urgency, compassion, reassurance, providing a roadmap, right? Managing the expectation for the claimant, what's to come during this representation, how long it would take, who's going to be the staff that's going to work in the case for you, how many months, when's the next time you're going to hear from us, right? Let's manage those expectations. I think we do that just in humanity. I think we do a really poor job at managing each other's expectations. Maybe there's a lack of accountability, not tracking key performance indicators, or not investigating the black holes. We can keep going over here. Jay, next slide. Now, and I'm going quick here, guys. Uh, for, for more details, just come reach out to me and I'll tell you how we can help anyone, you know, even if you want to talk intake. This is, this is my passion, if you couldn't tell. Here are my KPA, KPIs that I want you to watch. You need to know your want percentage, right? You're going to go spend money with a marketer, a strong marketer like Jay. You're going to want to know, okay, Jay, I'm spending X amount of dollars with you a month. I'm getting Y amount of leads. What's my want percentage? What percent of the leads that you give to me are, are cases that are qualified? That's very important to know. Then you want to know, like I talked earlier, your conversion percentage, right? How many of those that I wanted did I ultimately sign? Now, what I did bring up earlier, which is really important, is the reason why the conversion percentage can help you isn't just to pat yourself on the back and say, woohoo, 94%. And by the way, I've worked with law firms that sign 400 cases a month and are at 98%. So if you think you're at 90 or 91, don't pat yourself on the back. You can do better, I promise. Now, why is that so important? Here's why. Um, when you know your conversion percentage, you know what you wanted and lost. Look into those wanted and lost cases. Find out what it was. Talk to the intake specialist that spoke with the claimant that you wanted and lost. Was listen to that phone call, right? What happened? Did we not answer the questions appropriately? Did we, did we not convince them to sign uh, effectively? There could be a million other reasons. You've got to look into the wanted and lost. Don't ignore those. You want to know your retained percentage, which is very much, very simple. How many did I retain out of how many leads I got? You want to know your loss percentage? You want to know your cost per lead, cost per qualified, and cost per retained, very important each month. Your average time to follow up on web leads, guys. It cannot be 25 minutes. It cannot be 15 minutes. It can't be the next morning. If you get a lead at 9.45 at night, someone's got to call back at 9.45 or 9.46 and 9.47 at night. It can't be the next morning. Friday evening lead can't get called back on the Monday morning. You, you want to know your average number of attempts before quitting. It's not three and out, right? This isn't a football game, three and out. you got to keep going. I would suggest you, you try at least 15 times before you give up on a lead. That's without contact. Once you speak with them, that number is going to be even higher. You want to know the average sign-up time between qualifying and retaining and between lead generation and retaining. See how you can improve that. You want to know you retained, then rejected. What does that mean, Gary? Well, let's say you retained 100 cases last month. How many of those 100 cases did you ultimately reject after retention? That might impact your criteria. That might impact something might be going wrong at intake if it's 50%. Then again, if it's 5%, hey, that's great. Don't worry about the ones that you rejected after you retain them. Remember this saying, it's better to retain than reject than never to retain at all. Last couple here. You want to know your average number of cases that qualified on the first call, as opposed to having to call back a million times. And lastly, you want to know the reasons claimants provide for not proceeding. If a claimant says, you know what, I'm just not interested. Ask that question. Mrs. Jones, may I ask, what was it? What is it that made you not interested? Ask that question. You might get, well, your intake specialist, you know, was cursing at me or wasn't listening to me. You might get, well, I, I don't think you really want the case. No one really told me that my case qualifies. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Of course your case qualifies. Ask that question. There's a great book. It's like 50 pages. It's called Ask More, Get More. Ask for information, you'll get more information. All right, let's go to this last one over here and hopefully I'm not going too late over here, Jay, for you. Last slide. 10 things your firm must do to sign more cases, right? And now we're going to come full circle. A lot of this you already heard me say. Listen to calls again and again and again. Do not ignore them. Track your KPIs. Authorize your team to make decisions. Review the decisions that are made. Have attorneys get involved. It's so important, guys. It happens in other industries. We'd be silly to think that they don't need to be involved in intake. Now, that's not, I'm not saying attorneys should do the intake because I know... Unfortunately, as an attorney, I know that my, my, my other you know, fellow attorneys are not great at intake, but we can be good closers. If you have a good, bright personality and you understand the business side of things, you can be a good closer. Improve or strengthen your follow-up process, right? I can't tell you how many cases we've signed months, months 
after that lead was generated for the law firm, one of our clients, because we just stuck with the claimant, right? They weren't ready yet. Okay, we'll keep following up. Not yet. Okay, we'll keep following up. Turned out to be a very high value case, right? Let's not think we only have to call three times and then we're done. Um, hold refer out firms more accountable. This is so important. If, you, if, if law firms are not responsive to you, if they're not telling you, hey, got the, got the case, so I'm going to go follow up now, or hey, we can't sign it because of the following reasons, if not communicating with you on leads that you're giving to them for free, then you might want to find another attorney to work with. Keep your intake staff motivated and prepared. It is a very different, listen, I know it's probably the lowest paying job in your firm. I get it. It's probably one of the hardest jobs in your firm. Have you ever tried being on the phone all day long, making phone calls, picking up phone calls, making phone calls, picking up phone calls, speaking with people who don't qualify? Try it for one day. You're going to be exhausted by the end of the day. Exhausted. You've got to keep them motivated. You've got to keep them prepared. you got to let them know how much they're appreciated. They are the backbone of your firm. You cannot ignore them. And lastly, convey reassurance, interest, and urgency. You are in a competition, okay? This is the most important thing you have to understand. And, and this is when I, when I, if I ever go out to a law firm and consult with them, I made sure to say this. Every one of your intake team members need to understand that the claimant is going to call two other law firms other than yours, right? What can you say? What can you do differently and better to ensure the claimant chooses your law firm over the two others? Guys, that is my 30,000 foot view on intake. I hope I provide at least a couple of insights for you. Wish you the best of luck out there. Feel free to reach out to me about anything intake. Uh, my, my career is devoted to it. Good luck, everybody. Gary, that's awesome. And thanks for moving quick. Um, you know, everyone can always go back and watch the uh, repeat. Um, it'll be available on 10 Golden Rules on our blog. Uh, I, uh, I thought that was awesome. Um, you know, a few of the things that I noted down, you know, people aren't calling, you know, to have a conversation with you to see if you're nice. Um, they're actually calling to see if you have a case. And, and, and that's, that's an interesting thing because, you know, it's like, you always got to get out of your own head. You know, they're really not calling about you. They're calling about them. Um, and, and that's an interesting thing that we're doing a lot of blogging about, like, you know, what is a case? How do you, how much is my case worth? And those kinds of questions are, are really what you, what you hear a lot. I'm sure. Right. Yeah. Jay, the thing I understand, well, actually it's two things that come to mind. One is, we, we get stuck in this, of course, you're going to call me. And since you called me, let me learn more about how you found me. And we ask this question, hey, did you find me on TV? You find me online? And that's such an ego question. So if we could somehow remove that question from our, from our, our, our scripting, that would be huge. And the other thing here is let's, we have to be able to uh, uh, create a better outline for our intake team. I look at it this way. Someone calls up. We start with the niceties. I get your contact information. I find out if you qualify. I ask some additional questions. I make sure I throw in compassion and, and empathy and an urgency within that call. And then I move that call to yes or no, and I try to get it signed, right? If we throw out a lot of open-ended questions, we're now prolonging that call. And by the way, it may not even qualify. So there's a lot of training that goes in to your intake team to ensure that they're being efficient and productive for you. You talked about the importance of listening to calls. Um, and then you had a slogan, it's better to retain and then reject than never to retain at all. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a great one. You want to just expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I think we're so, you know, I, and I remember this from my days as um, an employee at a law firm. You know, law firms are so scared to, but I don't want to sign a bad case. Why am I signing a bad case? You're wasting my time with this, right? Get over yourself, every one of you. Get over yourselves a little bit here, okay? The whole point is we're gambling and we're investing and we're trying to get as many valuable cases in the door. And if a few of those need to be thrown out after they're in the door, what was the cost of throwing those out? In most states, it's minimal to zero. It said it's a phone call and it's a certified letter saying we can't help. And that's it, right? And if, and if you have the right personality and, and uh, ability to communicate on the phone, then the claimant's going to understand that the statute of limitations ran. And unfortunately, we have no option here but to reject your case. But stop worrying about signing a case that may not have value, right? Why not sign a case? Let's change the standard from we only sign cases that are definitely going to pay to, hey, we sign cases that should pay. Hey, why not sign that? 
What's wrong if you fail a few, right? You might sign more cases, end up resolving more cases, and yeah, you might reject a few after retention, but think about how much more money your firm just made, how many more people you just helped out. And I think we have to loosen that up a little bit, guys. You know, uh, I think the ego and the greed sometimes, sometimes can play a very uh, a negative role in the business we're running. Well, even to go one step further, I learned from a very, very smart attorney named Jerry Parker, and I know Jerry registered. So Jerry, if you're if you're watching, you're out there. Um, he, he said that for a long time, the firm would refer out the smaller cases to some of the attorneys who used to work for his firm. And then he realized over the period of, a, of several years that those guys were building huge law firms off of those referrals. And so he, he changed the philosophy to, you know, the firm took on every single, uh, you know, case or almost every case, because those are the f- future referral partners. You know, those are the folks who are, if you do a good job for them, and even if you get them a small check, but you take care of them and you look after their case, they are going to be the future referral folks and their friends and family. When they get in accidents, they're going to come back to you because you, you, you trusted, you know, you trusted them. They trusted you to take on their case. So I've I'll got, say one thing, I've got some more, uh, I'll yeah, say, say, say your last you. thing, but yeah. don't, don't go anywhere. Cause we're going to do a panel I with all, all three of us. I don't go anywhere. Um, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Jerry knows how indebted I am to him. I mean, I sharpened my teeth at that office, but something else uh, that I'm sure Jerry would tell you is, and I would ask everyone, in, 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 and I bet 90% of the law firms would raise their hand. If I had 100 law firms in the room and I said, hey guys, how many cases did you sign that seemed to be a little bit questionable at the intake, but ultimately gave you six digits in a referral in, in an attorney's fee? And I guarantee 90% of the law firms have raised their hand, right? Because they took the gamble on signing an, a case that wasn't definite to be a high value case, but it ultimately became one, right? You got, we have to take that gamble, guys. We have to be more aggressive. Don't worry about the rejections post-retention. Awesome. Well, thanks, Gary. Great job. And um, well, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to take all your questions. Um, and I, I've got some good questions for Gary and Puya. Uh, once we're done with uh, Puya's section. But I um, uh, want to tell you about Puya. So we discovered Intaker. Um, a few uh, law firms are you, w- that we know about are using it. I think they're up to four or 500 law firms. And, you know, basically this is really, really sophisticated stuff because um, artificial intelligence is basically a computer understanding humans and interacting with humans. And uh, one of the really fascinating things about AI is that the AI gets smarter over time because it learns from your interactions. And I have a whole presentation called um, Digital 2020 that I did for three or four years talking about artificial intelligence. And basically a couple of the examples in the presentation, uh, we learned that AI is now smarter than humans. Um, The artificial intelligence language um, software is better than human transcribers. And there's a a software that actually does um, legal work and it, it does it in like two or three minutes and humans take two hours and the error rate is significantly lower than the error rate in the humans. So the AI is not perfect at doing uh, this you know, relatively rudimentary legal work, but it, it's way faster, obviously less expensive um, and um, uh, has a lower error rate than the humans. So. Um, Artificial intelligence is, is here, it's very real. And um, Puya was working with Google and they were developing AI. And one of the things that kept bubbling to the top was artificial intelligence for law firms. And he created Intaker, launched it in 2019. And as you see here uh, from the slide, grew, to, grew 750% in 2020 and is growing like crazy. So um, I want to introduce, you know, the newest cutting edge technology uh, for legal intake. And Puya is definitely the guy to do it. So without further ado, I think you're going to share your screen, right, Puya? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Let's do this. So uh, you should be able to do that. Yes. Uh, let's, let's, let's go ahead. Got it. Perfect. All right. 
Perfect. I thank, uh, thank you, Jay, for the intro and Gary. Uh, amazing, incredible stuff. Uh, and we were talking about the pain points and, and uh, I think I have a couple of solutions for some of those pain points. Um, uh, again, my name is Puya. I'm, um, I'm an immigrant, co-founder of Intaker. My background is natural language understanding. That's the science of uh, computers and robots understanding what we mean uh, with what we say, um, and then doing something about it. And uh, and as um, as uh, Gary uh, as uh, Jay said, I, I started Intaker in um, 2018. We launched in 2019, and now we're one of the fastest growing uh, legal tech companies in the country. So I think a lot of people want me to answer a question: Why should we go with bots and not? um live chats and uh and i guess i'm here to answer that question uh let's talk about live chats um a little bit there are two kinds of people you are either using a live chat or you're not using a live chat um if you are not using a live chat and you have uh traffic more than a thousand per month you have to start that immediately I can't emphasize more. Uh, if you have more than a thousand visitors on your website per month, and you can check out Google Analytics or talk to talk to your marketers about this, uh, it's important not to lose that opportunity. Um, every law firm is different. Like some firms will convert their chats at about 0.7 of a percent uh, if their conversion is a little bit on the lower side, but most firms will go beyond one percent, one percent, one point five percent. So when I say that lower threshold is a thousand visitors, I mean, you're losing pretty much about 10 to 15 leads uh, a month uh, without a chat. Uh, it will pay for itself and uh, there's no question that you gotta get started. But um, I wanna also talk to folks who are using a live chat already. And I wanna talk about uh, why automation could be a better solution. But to your surprise, I also think bots fail to represent the personality of the people behind the business. That's a big thing because if, um, if you're solving a lot of problems uh, by going from live chat to bots, and those are, um, for example, if you are, your response rate is low, if you are asking for the phone number too late, if you are not getting the quality, if you're not asking the qualifying questions you need, uh, because just every time that person, uh, every time an agent connects to the to the prospect, uh, they are asking, like sometimes they forget to ask certain questions about statute of limitation or, or if they're not asking about the state or the city or if, if they are, but the, the, the prospect, uh, does, or if they do it late and the prospect leaves the room, um, if something happens that because of that inefficiency, because of that, like, manual process, uh, you miss out the opportunity. Obviously bots can help here, but at the same time, you also might think like, hey, if I use a bot and I standardize the process, every time I know 100% this question is gonna be asked, what if I lose the personal touch? What if I somehow lose the empathy in that conversation? And that's true. Uh, you're gonna lose the empathy in the conversation, but. I think uh, at Intaker, we're, we're trying to solve that problem and I'm gonna talk about it in a minute. Um, there's also another thing um, that's very important in, in communication with prospects and that's text messaging. A lot of law firms have started some sort of text messaging already. Uh, some of them are thinking about it very seriously. Again, this is the second most important channel available to you. Email is gone, forget about email. email open rate for consumers is less than 20, 30%. Here's the deal. A lot of people who are in the business world, they use email. But those same people, when they wanna go to their dentist, when they are going to uh, buy something and you want, they wanna get, get reminded or a service they wanna get on, they would prefer text. They don't want that email. The email is there to send out documents, to sign documents, to do work. But if you're talking about PI cases, divorce, criminal, all the, all these, these are personal. It can't get more personal than a legal, a personal legal issue for someone. That's when I want to deal with my company stuff over email. But if something's going on with an accident for uh, 
um, someone I love, I want that to be sent to my phone through text and I want to see it immediately. That's why texting is the most important thing. Every single firm number needs to be text enabled. And it's, and it's important that you guys jump on a train because it's, it's leaving. It's uh, the, the open rate through text is more than 90%. That's compared to like email. So if you're using your email too much and it's going to spam folders, your open rate is probably less than 20%. So we're looking at like a huge change in open rates and, and response rate when you move from email to texting. And then who has the time to follow up? Like Gary was talking about uh, making the process of following up better. I can't agree more. This is a problem, but I could also see some lawyers maybe at that time thinking that, hey, I want to in improve my KPIs. I want to make my follow-ups better. I want to do all of these things. I just don't have the time for it. And here's, here's an answer I have for you. Automation. Automation is the answer to streamlining this process, not just about following up, but also tracking, tracking KPIs. If you are asking, there was, again, one point in Gary's, I got so excited, I almost got goosebumps. Um, Gary said, don't ask your clients where you came from. Did you search us on Google? Did you do? Don't ask that. Your automation system, your lead management system should tell you that information. They should have a code on your website. They should be tracking the phone calls. They should be tracking the chats all the way back to that very first interaction and tell you what happened along the way until they signed the retainer, until you got paid if you are a, a family lawyer. Here's what we do at Intaker. We um, make automation for law firms and, uh, and we pretty much do it by listening to them. We started with 10, 15 customers back in 2019. And then we listened to those, those folks and we've been building features on features. And the goal is to automate the whole intake process in a way that you don't lose the personal touch. Uh, Jay, how am I doing in terms of time here? All right, perfect. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second. If I can find- you wrap up in four or five minutes and give us you know, 10 or 12 for the questions, that'd be great. Sure, okay, let's do this. Are you, let me stop sharing my screen and then start sharing again. There you go, okay. Can you all see powerful automation to make you stand out? Yep, you're good. Awesome, awesome, great. All right, so what do we do to make this happen? Uh, we changed the chat, the automated chat process a little bit. We added video and voice. And this is, by the way, this is fully automated. When someone lands on your site, they're gonna see a personal message from the managing attorney. And then the managing attorney can, can welcome them to the page depending on what sort of landing page they're looking at. So if they're looking at the landing page for accidents, the managing attorney should, could come up inside a widget, come up with a personal message about the accident they just had, directly personalizing the messaging, coming from the attorney, the, the person, the best closer at the firm could talk to them directly. Again, it's automated, but it has the empathy factor there. And then once they click on whatever prompt that they're there to talk to, again, this process continues. And then that conversation, it's automated conversation with video, it's gonna be way more personalized. Within a couple of clicks, that person that's doing this automa automated interaction with your firm is going to know the managing attorney. It's going to get a feeling of who they are. It's going to trust that person. Pretty much we are fast tracking the trust here by adding other elements like video and voice to this conversation. And then once that happens, we capture all the important information. So if you're talking about uh, statute of limitation, if you're talking about the state, uh, the, the geography, if they're talking about even if they are the injured person or is there someone else, or if uh, for family lawyers talking about the opposing counsel or if the uh, opposing party conflict checks, all these things, we're, we're going to every single time, we're going to ask for the right information. Again, because as Jay said, this is a machine. It doesn't make mistakes. Once you tell it what to do, it's not going to 
make any mistakes asking for the right info that you want. And then we're going to assign it based on that information we capture. We're going to assign it to the right person on your team. So they get notified immediately. And again, as Gary said, you got to respond to those leads immediately. Uh, some people say within two hours, some people say within 10 minutes, I would say if you can within seconds, if we, we're going to notify you within seconds, again, with a live chat, that notification, that person, that agent's going to input the information, you're going to get back, uh, like you're going to receive a notification a few minutes later, but because this is a machine, you're going to receive a notification within seconds. So you're going to act on that. You can even get back to them on phone call or text, depending on like where you are and what's what's available to you within seconds while they're still on the chat. And then schedulers. Some uh, lawyers like this, some lawyers don't. If you're a PI, you want to take it to a phone call, there's no question. If you're an employment plaintiff, you might want to uh, set up uh, like um, consultations, criminal, family. If you're that kind of lawyers, you, you might want to use this. We integrate with Canonly, Acuity, with all the important schedulers out there. And then there's Google My Business. I'm sure you guys booked tables before on open table for restaurants. We pretty much offer the same thing on, on, on Google My Business uh, law firm pages. So when they click on appointments, they go directly, they see the same message from the managing partner. And on the other end in Google Analytics and, uh, and in your lead management system, you can track back the referring URLs and pretty much say that, hey, this opportunity, this retainer came from Google My Business on this day without asking the client. And then there's the text messaging that's very important. Once a lead is captured by Intaker, is qualified by Intaker, obviously, if it's during the working hours or, or, or a phone call is possible, you're going to make a phone call immediately, hopefully. But if it's not possible, we have text templates already that will personalize the name of the person in there uh, automatically. And then you can send them out with two, two clicks, pretty much. So that, again, Intaker will send out an automated confirmation automatically to every single lead, even if it's 2 a.m., even if you don't, don't do anything. And that, that automated text could be personalized too. But, um, but if you want to get involved in that conversation through two-way texting, you can through our dashboard. And we're going to notify you at the right time and everything. So two-way texting, templates, and automation. And then there are other stuff that you're going to need in this process. When, once you get started on capturing these leads, qualifying the leads, assigning to the right people, and then getting involved with the two-way texting thing, you're going to have to store inform information in formatted fields. You want to know their birthdays so that you can um, run nurture campaigns later. You want to be able to assign tasks to a certain intake specialist or a certain attorney and then notify them immediately without like uh, have to uh, write the story of the case again, you can actually go to that case profile and just assign it to them or set reminders for someone else. All of this is possible through the Intaker dashboard. And then the tracking part, that's very important. The tracking part is incredibly important as Gary said, like knowing where the success is happening, being able to track back things, being able to like, uh, stop gambling on on different tools and 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 um, and uh, failing marketing pretty much. Um, this is why we're here. The goal that we have with uh, with Intake Your Analytics is like stop asking intake specialists to ent enter data for tracking because no matter how much you remind them, how many times you remind them every day that hey I need this status I need that it's very important to realize that these people are going to forget 30, 40% of the time to input the right information for every lead. And then the, the, the automated analytics that, uh, that your lead management system provides is going to give you all the information you want. As long as they have a code, don't want it to get too technical here, but they have a code on the website and they are tracking, they're pretty much transferring all that information from the very first moment that the client lands on the site until the moment they e-sign. This was it. I tried to go fast, but I guess the conversation is going to go on in the in the in the questions. But uh, but yeah, that's that's what Intaker is, and that's who we are. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks you, Pooja. Thanks, Pooja. Can you do one thing? I don't think you did a a law firm demo. Is it easy? Can you hop on a law firm website? And, you know, sure. I think your product, it, it, it explains itself so well. Perfect. Awesome. No, for sure. Sorry for putting you on the spot.
<laughs> no, let me see if I can go to a... All right, can you all see uh, yep. the sperm? Yep. So I'm gonna play, I'm gonna open the chat widget and hopefully you guys can hear uh, what I have. I'm not sure if you can hear the video. Tell me if you can't. Hi, I'm attorney Augie Ribeiro. And for over 60 years, Ventura Law has been fighting for those who have been injured. Please fill out the intake form below and one of our intake specialists will be reaching out to you soon. We hope to be of service for you like we have for thousands of people over the past 60 years. Do That's you feel great. the empathy? I see, I see you've right. been editing the video a lot, right? So yeah. <laughs> what, what percentage engagement or improvement do you get from the video? Uh, before I quickly do that, I want to show something, Jay. Sure. So let's yeah. say we have uh, this lawyer has Spanish clientele, and this is what I mean by smart automation. Hola, yo soy abogado Agustino Rivero. Por más de 60 años, Ventura Law está peleando por su... If someone's clicking on Spanish, they want to hear the lawyer talking in Spanish, and they should not change any kind of language. When I click on Spanish, or if I land through like Spanish SEO, I land on a website, the chat, the system, like the, the client conversion system should be smart enough to switch the video to a Spanish so that I can pretty much, again, fast track that trust. About the engagement you said, uh, every single thing, Jay, that we added to the product is adding like an incremental value, like 10, 15% to conversion. So let's say if a traditional website, like if, if you historically, like with one of those traditional live chats, you um, convert at like 1%. Once you add the video, that's gonna be uh, 1.15. And then once you add the voice, you actually have voice. So the, it's intra once I click on one of these prompts, uh, like there is interactive voice that's going to be like as a, as a guide while, while I'm going through the conversation. Another uh, point 15. And then we added a text uh, follow-ups, another point 15. And then making so, sure uh, the loyalty is there. Dumb it down for me. Go back to English. <laughs> so I'm from Canada. I didn't learn any Spanish. Um, and just... <laughs> If you, if you don't mind, just click on a few, just show how intuitive the the uh, the app is. Yeah, for sure. So if I go to car accidents, for example, there are a couple of things. We want them to open up at the beginning. So we ask them an open-ended question, but yeah. here's the deal. Not a lot of people would wanna hear a story. Some lawyers would wanna just get into the conversation. The thing that we created is that they don't have to go into some technical decision tree to change any of this logic. All they have to do is to toggle like asking for a story first off and the system will stop asking it. So it's pretty much like if someone's get it, it's trying to get this up and running, could probably do this in like 15, 20 minutes. All the scripts are there, they're all fully optimized, like about 900 plus practice areas all covered. So they would come in, they would drag and drop a whole bunch of practice areas and it'll be good to go. So let me say, I don't wanna try this on this account. Let me see if I can find like a demo account. There you go. Oh yeah, Intaker, you can demo on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, again, the, this is Jordan, one of our Hi, I'm Jordan. And, we'll and then I'll go into the car accident and hopefully the settings are right. It says, I just had an accident. So here's another thing. If you are using a traditional live chat, you can't really force people to tell you their co the contact information. So if I do that, um, the problem is like, they're going to ask for name in the beginning, most of them, and then the contact information at the end. But that's the wrong way to do it. Because like, if someone, if grandma walks in and then you somehow leave that chat, Best case, without leaving a phone number, it's not worth anything. So it's kind of important to get that contact information early on and not do it within a form because form people don't want to see. It's interactive, um, kind of like providing information one piece of info at a time. We don't want to do this in a way that, hey, what's your name? What's your phone number? We want to like get them engaged little by little. So in the very on, we ask for a story. 
This is the first, by the way, this process is based out of um, a, a, uh, a book called Hooked uh, by Nir Eyal. Uh, it's pretty much like the way that you can get people engaged first and then quickly ask for the information you want. It's very interesting if anyone's interested in go going to read that book, especially it's gonna be very good for getting the conversions high on the website at, uh, itself as well. So I provide a phone number. Another cool thing we do here is like we actually go back in real time and we, uh, and we check with all the carriers to make sure this number is not just looks right, but also exists in the US and Canadian database. So if I go here and give obviously TCPA because we are sending those automated texts, we wanna ask for consent. So once they give consent, Intaker will automatically send them a text and then my email, And then obviously we're getting to qualifying questions. If they leave at any point here where they have their phone number, so at this point you're already your team is already notified. You know what's this about? You you know the story inside Intake Dashboard. Receive emails, you receive text, everything. Like all the intake specialists could receive a text at this point to get back to this person even while they're chatting. And uh, and then while you're doing that, they're answering your qualifying questions. So let's say the accident was in California. And then the time of that accident. So hopefully it's not 2017. And then if they don't like to provide any of this information, there are some informations that are important. So there are some that are a little bit less important. For the first interaction, we let them skip that question so it doesn't be, it's not, it's not like a showstopper for the client, but uh, Jay, you get the idea yeah, no, no. after all the important info. No, this is awesome. And I love it. Um, it's just so um, it's so advanced technologically, but it's so intuitive. You guys have uh, put a lot of smarts into it. So, so congratulations. Um, anyways, let's uh, take some questions and um, I see some coming in uh, folks. You can either do it through the chat or through the Q and a function. Um, if you don't mind, just stop, stop, share, and then it'll bring us all up big, and uh, we can we can do the panel. So I, 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 you know, I because I organize this, I get to ask the first questions. But um, uh, you know, I, I just want to start, you know, a little bit broad. Like you guys both see a ton of traffic coming in. What are the best lead sources for law firms? Where, where should uh, law firms be focused on generating the intake opportunities? I mean, you got to go tried and true, Jay. Um, it's you can't answer that question with you know the name of a marketer uh, or uh, TV. It's not that simple. There are so many factors that go into um, getting someone, uh, giving someone the courage and the confidence to get on the phone or to go online and fill something out. So I think um, you have to go to your your friends and you find out who's working. You got to try things, and sometimes you have to try them for more than just you know, two weeks, you got to give marketers an opportunity to, to prove themselves out to you. Um, uh, what I would say is this, I would say that um, the, you have to track. If you track your marketing dollars appropriately, you're going to know what's working and what's not working. And you get to hold your marketers accountable. There are plenty of times where I've worked with a law firm that has worked with a dozen different marketers, right? And they have no idea which one's working and which one isn't working. They just see the whole conglomerate or, or hey, I got X amount of leads and this is what's working. So I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. There's that old saying, right? Uh, that marketers say, uh, or law firms say, 50% uh, uh, of my marketing is working. I just don't know which 50%. You got to do that. You got to look into the metrics of each marketer on a very recurring, uh, frequent basis and you got to hold them accountable. So I think tried and true, talk to your friends, see what's working for them. Uh, and, and give the marketers an opportunity to show you what they could do over, you know, a 30 or 60 day time period. Yeah. Booya, you, you want to answer that question as well? The, the best lead sources that are generating, you know, cases. Um, I, I'm just going to give some uh, great, great stuff, Gary. The only thing I'm going to add is like based on location uh, and practice areas, I've seen different things. Like, um, like for PI, it's, it's way more competitive for, for family, criminal, and bankruptcy. I've seen a lot of 
um, um, success in paid ads. Uh, also, one thing that I, a lot of lawyers are missing out are, are, is GMB, Google My Business. If someone doesn't have uh, a GMB account, they've got to do it immediately. If they don't have um, reviews on their GMB, it's important to get started yesterday. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's one of those things that Google, Google's pushing. Um, it's uh, in in a few years, Google's not going to like for legal services. The most important thing is going to be GMB, having the services and the products listed there um, with uh, with the right links, with the right appointment links, with the right like everything. And then you you want to be if when you're searching like. Um, PI lawyer near me, and then you see that your competition has like 40 reviews, 50 reviews. You want to make that your goal to beat. And then there are tools for that. Like, for example, in the text messaging I showed you, you can create a template for asking to write a review and leave the GMB review link in there. And then within Intaker with two clicks, when someone's happy or at the peak of their interest, you can send out a request for them to just leave a five-star review immediately. And then if you do this for a year, hopefully you're gonna be able to beat that goal. Great, great answers. Um, one of the things I'm seeing a trend, uh, you know, really significant is texting. You know, as, as the young lawyers grew up texting and young clients grew up texting and, you know, those of us with, you know, friends with kids, you know, they don't get off their phone and they, they don't talk to real people. Uh, but, um, you know, they, they're, they're super attuned to texting. And a lot of times a young lawyer will text his client and, and hardly ever, if, if ever, speak to them. What, do you, what trends are you guys seeing in, um, you know, uh, data and trends towards texting and percentages and, um, and, and how important is it um, is, as you see the future of, uh, you know, both conversion of clients and, and uh, ongoing uh, client management with, with existing cases. Yeah, Pui, I'll jump in real quick here. Um, from, a, from an intake standpoint, um, not only is texting required and necessary with respect to communicating with potential clients and having substantive conversations with them, but I'll go one step further. Um, you've got to be signing cases up through text links, uh, having your retainers in there. Uh, if you're not doing that, uh, you're leaving money on the table. Your competitors are doing it. That was that was a five years ago thing. Uh, it's becoming prehistoric at this point, quite frankly. But that's how required it is. Um, I would tell you that for for current clients, um, the biggest complaint and lawyers out there, you know this. The biggest complaint that clients have with their lawyers is that no one calls them, no one follows up with them, no one gives them a status update. Well, you know what? You're not using texting then. You should be texting your clients a status update. You should be texting them happy birthday. You should be texting them that things are going well and that here's your new, this is your your um, your legal team that's working on your case. And this is the recent um, uh, update on your case. And if you're not doing that, I promise you, your competitors either are or are thinking about it. So uh, we, we tend to be, unfortunately, they're, they're, it's funny, our industry is very um, intuitive innovative is actually what I'm thinking about. What we think about creative ideas, but as a whole, we're behind the times. You know, so we have to do a better job at making sure that we are communicating the same way that Ritz Carlton communicates. When you get into a Ritz and, and, and you just get into the hotel and you go to your room, you get a text that says, hope everything went well, we're here if you need us, just give us a call. You know, and that's gotta be the type of communication that we're supplying to our clients. Gary, you mentioned the text links. Is that just a link to a DocuSign? It could is, be, yeah. yeah. There, 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 there's no text link software that I don't know about. No, no, it could be a DocuSign or there are you know, half a dozen or a dozen companies yeah. like that. But if you have someone that's qualified, isn't yeah. the gold standard here, guys? If I have someone who's qualified, I don't want to hang up that phone call and tell that client signed. So what's the best way to get them signed while I'm on the phone with them? Mrs. Jones, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to text you and email you a link to our retainer. And I'm going to stay on the phone with you while you review it, just in case you have any questions. And this way, if you do sign it, I'm going to let you know I got it and let you know that you're now a client. You have nothing to worry about. That's the best call right there. We've got to have more of those. Booyah, over to you. Uh, what, what trends and data are you seeing on texting? I would divide this into two parts, pre-client and post-client. Uh, people used to... Um, 
use taxing post client. Uh, everybody needs to start using it for pre client as well. Uh, Jay, do you mind if I share my screen for a second? No, no, go ahead. You got value so far when you did. So, you know. <laughs> so there are a couple of things here. Uh, there are, as we are like uh, marketing and working on like texting and the product, I know about a few pain points. Like one of the pain points that people have is like, hey, for people who want to just get started, I would say, I don't want to text people from my personal cell. And here's the, uh, here, here's the answer. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be texting people from your personal cell. There are a few reasons. You don't want people to text you after hours. You want to have control over that. And also when someone is even texting your staff, if you buy phones for everyone, if they're texting your staff, if they leave the firm or if something happens to that phone, you're going to lose, you're going to, uh, like you can't collaborate or in that call in those conversations that's personal texting you you every firm needs business texting in here and separate the phone number just one phone number for the firm and then you can go back and forth on that and then another pain point is like hey uh, people will say i started with this texting product i captured they capture leads from my website but i get into that text conversation it takes forever to for me to qualify the lead over text and uh, I don't like it. I want to just hop on the phone, but they're not going to hop on the phone because they, they prefer texting. And here's my answer to, for, to that. Yes, if you want to qualify a case over, over, over text messaging for half an hour, that's not the efficient way. It's not a great way. And, uh, and I know a lot of folks who would start it with one of those products and then they, they uh, quickly moved away from it. But what I wanted to show is that like, hey, uh, imagine like I'm, I'm getting started to talk with, uh, with Clint. If I'm sending a text to Clint, uh, knowing all this information that um, there is a divorce and there are, they have bank accounts, properties, they have children, they have, even I can do the conflict check with, uh, for Clint. I, I have all this information. Then my very first text to Clint is going to be very meaningful. Uh, and then it's gonna not, it's not gonna take like that qualification even even if I have one question I want to uh, ask one simple thing uh, or two things it's not gonna take 20 minutes it's gonna take a couple minutes I'm gonna ask my question I'm gonna move on if I want to use a template that's gonna be easy too for texting so let's say for the other thing I just made I want to ask for a review I just click on this the text will be populated here hi Clint we appreciate. Let's leave the review here, capture that through text. Open rates is way higher to answer that question, Jay. There's no question people got to start immediately, but they just have to do it in the right way. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we have some questions from the attendees. So uh, please go ahead and either chat uh, a question or in their Q&A function uh, down at the bottom. If you scroll down to the bottom of uh, your Zoom screen with your mouse, a uh, little panel will come up with uh, chat or Q and A. So um, first for Joe, uh, yes, we are recording and we'll post it on our blog at 10goldenrules.com. And we'll also, everyone who registered, of course, and you all did, uh, we'll send you a link. But um, if you're watching this, as I said, sometime in the future, um, well, then then you already know it's recorded. Uh, you're probably on YouTube or, or uh, 10 Golden Rules blog. Um, I have a happy uh, Juliana Onate. Uh, Onat, I apologize, I don't know your pronunciation, is, is a happy uh, intaker client. So thank you for that. And in the Q&A, um, anonymous attendee, how easy is it to install the software? What kind of integrations do you offer? So Puya, I guess that's for you. Uh, it's pretty easy uh, to get to a level that depending again, depending on the on the persona of the firm, if they're coming from uh, whatever background, it's pretty easy uh, to just have the, the widget there. In legal, people are used to very lengthy onboardings. So if they're getting started on using a new CRM, they would imagine, hey, for us to, to uh, train all the intake staff to do like it's going to take forever. And then by the end of that two months, we're going to decide if you want to hold on to this product or not. Uh, the, the beauty of, of how um, this product is designed is that once you um, install this on a few different 
channels like Google My Business, like your website, you're going to get start as long as you have traffic. It's like, again, more than a thousand visitors per month. You're going to get leads inside the Intaker dashboard. You don't have to train anyone for data entry. You don't have to do any of that. It's going to be automatically up and running. Our job in the, over the first two to three months is to make sure your settings are right based on the practice areas and based on the certain behaviors that your users have because every firm is different. But on your day one, we can probably have this up and running in 20 minutes. For onboarding, we usually reserve for about an hour, just in case, because we want to go over things and answer all the questions and talk about the weather. But, uh, but it's usually up and running on the websites if, if everything's ready in like 20 minutes. That's great. Let me go to a question for Gary, and then I want you to come back if, if you can. Can you show us Intaker on GMB? I, I haven't seen that. Sure, I will. Uh, I'm going to throw you a few curveballs here, but you know you're you're handling them so far. You're hitting them uh, out of the infield. Um, Gary, uh, question from you: If the chat is with staff, do you provide staffing? So uh, I guess do you do you guys take chats and and staff that? So uh, our uh, at ICE, we handle all the outsourced intake. So if you're looking to outbound or, or outsource your intake, the response, the qualification, the follow up. And the retention, that's something we can certainly do for you uh, if you're keeping it in-house and you're looking for someone to, to train those folks and, and to make sure your intake team understands the value uh, of, that, of that position. That's something I would do uh, personally. But uh, we don't uh, provide the staffing for you to do the chat, although we also, you know, if you're looking for chat, you know, I, I'd recommend Puya's got, you know, seems to have a really uh, a strong product here. If you're looking for someone to respond to those chats, get on the phone calls, qualify those claimants, uh, and do all the follow-up that's necessary, then that's something certainly my company can assist with. Okay, Puya, over to you, and you'll demo Intaker on GMB, right? Google My Business oh, is what absolutely. Google calls their Maps their Maps product. Exactly. Anyway, so this is that. Uh, let me see if I'm. Do you guys hear me? Am I on mute? Yeah, you're good. You're good. All right, perfect. So uh, as you know, GMB is built for mobile. It's a mobile first, first product. It's not something that people use a lot on desktop, uh, but on desktop, it, on mobile, it's 10 times better, but on desktop, this is how it works. So when people search, like this is uh, Richard Seller, he's a, an employment lawyer, uh, one of our uh, customers on Florida, when people come in pretty much like open table, when they click on attorney dot chat, uh, it will take them to the very, um, to the landing page, intake your landing page. It's a standalone kind of chat. You will ditch the website. You don't have to like, um, if someone's ready to click on appointments, they're ready to give you information. You don't have to like distract them with the other sort of info. A lot of people make decisions by just looking at the pictures on GMB and seeing the reviews and then making sure that lawyer does the same thing that they want done. Um, and then once they come here, again, Richard's gonna be there. Hi there, this is attorney Richard Seller. I'm an employment lawyer and I wanna thank you for reaching out to us regarding your policy. You know, the rest of the story. And then no matter where we capture the folks, the process is gonna be streamlined after. So it doesn't matter if it's on the site, if it's GMB or even within an article at the end of the, uh, at the end of an article in a paragraph, just leaving the, the intake or direct link for people to click on and then contact you immediately. I know a lot of like, um, not a lot, but a few, a handful of folks that are getting rid of form and fields and then embedding intake or inside like a contact us page or inside the footer as, because once you embed this inside an iframe, that's a technical kind of word for like putting it in a box. Uh, once you put it a, in an iframe, it doesn't look like a chat anymore. It looks like an interactive form. Great, thank you. Um, uh, I guess a quick from Joe uh, Moses again. We use Intaker, however, we get a lot of spam. Is there any techniques that Intaker can avoid or filter spam? Joe, you gotta uh, move to V4. You are, I think, on one of the old platforms. Uh, you are on the on the basic version. You gotta move to V4. And yes, uh, in our new platform that I just uh, uh, presented, you can filter out certain locations. 
you can filter out uh, certain uh, URLs. I know a lot of folks have like high converting pages on their website that they don't really like the leads from anymore. Like, but they still want to keep them there because of the traffic, the backlinks and everything, because those are like, those are high traffic pages that they don't want to get rid of. The, the cool thing is that like, once you do an analysis, hopefully with your marketing firm, uh, like Jay is going to come back to you and tell you that, hey, these certain pages are, they have a lot of traffic, but we don't want the leads from them because we don't take those cases anymore. We can turn off intake here on those certain pages. Or you might come back and say, hey, I don't take cases from California. Uh, I don't want to take cases, but I get, but for some reason, my pages are ranking really high in those states. And uh, what would I do? I would say, don't delete the pages, just delete intaker on that page and you're not going to get uh, spammed. Great answer, Gary. Um, you mentioned that the in, uh, intake person has a unique role because they're taking calls all day. What are some of the things you look for in hiring an intake professional? Well, um, I think it's important they understand the position before they jump into it. Uh, what I think is, uh, what I like to do with new hires is I like for them to actually, and this is pre-COVID world, but to sit down during their uh, interview process for about an hour uh, with the intake team and to see exactly what the responsibilities are to make sure that's something that they want. Uh, I think, again, one of the things I said in my presentation is that where we fail in humanity is we don't manage expectations very well. And I think for something like an intake position, we have to do a really good job, a strong job at managing the expectations of a new hire. Uh, to the extent that they have any sales experience, big plus. To the extent that they have experience in that industry so that they can speak in a confident manner about how personal injury uh, cases are handled, big plus. Uh, to the extent that they have experience being on the phone all day and understanding that, you know, after one call, another call, then another call, then another call, uh, that's a big plus. To take, take someone who ha doesn't have those three elements, um, there's got to be an X factor that, uh, that they have because this is different. This is a different position. Uh, it's not something they've done, most of them, in, in the past. Uh, and I got to tell you, they, they have power. These are powerful positions. This is the first impression that your firm is providing to a new claimant. And if they're not emphatic, if they're not interested, if they're not personable, if they're not likable, if they don't understand, if they don't have answers uh, for the claimant because they don't understand the subject matter uh, in which the claimant is contacting you about, then you lose, right? And I'm a big sports guy. I look at things as winning or losing, winning or losing. Intake is sort of that moment where you're either going to win or lose, right? You trust your, in I, I can tell you right now, I guarantee you that that 75% or higher, it's really close to the 90, 75% or higher of the cases you retain, you're going to resolve for money. You're going to resolve them for money. But how do you get them in the door? That's the first impression. And uh, you got to make sure you train appropriately and, uh, and, and you fire quick if it's not the right person. Uh, because the last thing you want is to have someone who's not good at intake and somehow extend that employment relationship because you, you know, you're having a hard time getting rid of them. All right, last couple of questions. Um, you guys both mentioned uh, Google My Business or, or Puya. You, you, you demoed it for us, um, but neither of you mentioned Google Screened or uh, local service ads. Um, you see here on, on my screen at the top of the screen, these new ads pop up. This is actually our client. Um, we, we, we got them in there relatively early um, and they're in the first position, which is awesome. We've generated over like 2000 leads for our clients um, by getting, them, getting in early to this game. What, what are you guys seeing? Like, I, I think it's a game changer. Um, these are pay per lead positions. We did actually two webinars now on Google Screen in the last six months. Um, and, and um, you know, these, these are above the, um, the paid ads. They're above the maps. Um, they're above the SEO. Um, what are you guys seeing from Google Screen in the industry? Is it uh, changing the percentages? And, and what do you think? I think it's uh, it's another way for Google to to sell uh, search real estate, <laughs> but yeah, it's the LSAs are 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 amazing. I've heard a lot of good things yeah. about them. Um, I've seen that in certain locations they don't make sense. They just got too expensive early on. I'm sure 
Jay, you can probably talk about this better, but I've heard from a couple of marketing agencies that they got into it early on, but it got just too expensive in, a, in yeah. like major cities and they have to get out. But, um, but it's, uh, it's, 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 I think it's a fairly an, a new thing. And it's, if it's the cost per case financially makes sense, um, people should do it. Um, I will, I want to ask this question yeah. from you. What do you, what, uh, what's your opinion about LSAs? Yeah, you're right. I mean, at, at the end of the day, embedded in your answer is you've got to measure your cost per case. And that's what I started with. That's what Gary talked about. And you just summarized, you know, like if you're spending money on marketing, it can't be guesswork. It's got to be, you know, I call it grade 10 math. You know, what, how much are you spending? What, how many leads did you get? How many did you convert that we talked for an hour and a half about now? And what's your cost per conversion on the paid portions of the campaign? Um, but, you know, it's, it's definitely, when I, and you joked, you said it's another way for Google to monetize the search real estate. Um, you know, it, it's, it's actually very obvious because there used to be a call button here on the maps and the call button's gone. And now there's a paid, and the, the maps is all free real estate. It's SEO basically. And now these are pay per call or pay per lead um, real estate. So Google's taken those freebie calls and they've monetized them um, with this uh, paid paid portion. Gary, what what do you see? Uh, are you seeing any trends with uh, regard to, to LSAs? I'm seeing that the, uh, the the law firms that are spending the most are doing the most. Uh, and, and are getting the most back in return. And, and I think it's uh, like Puya said, like you said, uh, this becomes, depending upon where you are, this is an expensive request. Uh, and if you can afford it uh, and the metrics support that, then you have to do it, right? You have to, you're not, if you're on the second page uh, for PI, you, you just, it's going to hurt you long-term. It's going to hurt you short term, short term as well, but long-term your business might fail. Uh, so you have to do everything in your power, whether it's the shortcut paid stuff, uh, or it's the uh, or it's the non shortcut, but you're doing everything else right, and you get in there organically. Uh, you have to do whatever you have to do to get in that first page. Awesome. Well, guys, this was fantastic. I'm just going to make sure that no more late questions. No, just a bunch of thank yous. Thank you. Um, so um, I want to thank you both so much for making the time, and um, for those of you sometime in 2024 watching this, you know, send us all a. Um, a message through our, our intake or on our website to uh, let us know how much you enjoyed it. Uh, but, but seriously, thank you guys. And thank you everyone for being here. And thank you everyone for watching in the future. Um, have a great day, everyone. Thank you guys. Take care. Thank you, Gary. Thank you.